Welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to look at something I think is completely game-changing to the Game Boy development community and that is debugging in GBDK 2020. Let's get stuck in. Those of you who've been following along, you know that we write C code in a software kit called the Game Boy Developer Kit, GDBK. And if you've watched the last couple of videos I've done, I've talked about a new version of GBDK called GBDK 2020. And this is a massive improvement. If you haven't seen my video already, go and have a look at that. It's a new kind of continuing build of the original GBDK where a, a good group of people, and I won't mention them all because there's quite a few people involved, have really, really continued what was created originally, gone and fixed lots of the bugs, Bugs, updated a lot of the tools, the latest tools, the performance is much better, a lot of the bugs have been worked out as I said, but today what I'm going to show you I think is a real game-changing feature. And for those of you who are already kind of developers, you will understand immediately why this is, and those of you who have kind of started new to development may not understand, but hopefully I'll be able to show you. So what I'm talking about today is the ability to debug your code that you're writing. And debugging basically means being able to inspect the code as it's running. And what this really helps us do is when your code is not behaving the way you thought it was or thought it should, you can actually step through line by line in your code and understand at any point what variables are set to what, whereabouts in your code it is. You can watch it kind of follow your code through. It really helps you find those bugs. Usually bugs that you've caused, unfortunately, because you just haven't thought something through, but occasionally it will help you find bugs uh, that are unexpected things or strange things in the Game Boy um, kind of hardware that you just don't understand yet, maybe. And occasionally you might actually manage to find some real bugs that are bugs in GBDK, but it's more than likely going to be your bugs uh, that you find, really, or your lack of understanding. When I was writing my game, I was having to kind of write things out to the screen, and that's very difficult to do on the Game Boy. This really lets you look at everything. It will be much, much faster, much less frustrating to be able to develop your own games. But we have to do a few things to get started to get everything set up. So the first thing you need to go and do is go to this web address here, to Zal Zero's uh, Game Boy Developer Kit 2020 page on GitHub and you need to go and download the latest release. It's only just been released. So if you go to releases on the right hand side here, you want version four and download it for your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna download it. If you get anything coming up with antivirus, a few people on some antiviruses have had something reporting um, that there's a virus in here, there is not. It's just misreporting, I think, um, one of the tools, SDCC. Um, but if you do, um, go and check for yourself. You want to be doubly sure, but I, I'm confident there's nothing in there. So you want to unzip it. So take this GBDK. And if you've been following my tutorials in the root of your drive, you'll already have a GBDK folder. You can see here I've actually created a GBDK 2020 folder. Um, it's just if I want to carry on running some of my old code against the, the old software kit, which I shouldn't really need to, um, but just in case there's something isn't working, I want to keep that around. So I've got a new directory uh, which has the last release of GBDK 2020 in it. So just uh, copy everything and, and delete it and then paste in the new version. You can just write it over the top if you want to, but it's nice to kind of clean it out. Now you can see it's put it in a folder which I don't want. Let's just put it back up a folder. So you should have C, GBDK, 2020, or if, if you want to, if you're new to this, just put it in GBDK, uh, and then you've got all the files. That's everything you need on that side. What we need also is an emulator. Um, and in my previous videos, I've been using a great emulator called BGB. Um, that has some debugging features if you are writing in assembly, but not if you're writing in C. Um, so there's actually uh, an emulator that's been around for a long time now, um, but the author has been developing lots of great new features in it, and he's been working with the GBDK community um, to put debugging in it for C. So it's called Emulicious. You can see here's the address here, and you need to go and download it um, from their downloads page. If you're on Windows, you want this with Java for Windows version, so just download this. Then again, unzip it. I'm just going to unzip it and put it on my desktop, I think. You can put it wherever you like. And it does work the same as BGB, the other emulator that uh, we've been using. Um, just run it, start it. You'll see it will come up with a little prompt whether you want to have updates. I'm just going to select install them automatically. It's a nice little feature built into the emulator. Uh, and here's the emulator. So you might want to do what we've done previously where you increase the size a little bit, um, etc. 
and you would do normal file open or drag your your Game Boy file onto it to play it. There's a few things you need to do first. You need to go to Tools, Remote Debugger, and enable the Remote Debugger. It might bring up a, a firewall prompt like I've got here. And that will basically have Emulicious now listening for Visual Studio Code to actually um, come in and do debugging. You'll also notice there was a link in here for Show Visual Studio Code Extension. So if you click on that, it will open up the Visual Studio Code extension that you need for Emulicious. Um, and so if you haven't, you should already have Visual Studio Code installed that we've been using in our previous tutorials. Uh, and if you just click on here, it will open up Visual Studio Code and let you install the debugger. Just click on Install. Okay, that's now installed. You can see the plugins here you've got installed. You can see I've got it here. You can kind of go into uh, settings if it's got any in there, but we don't need to do that. I've opened up uh, some code that I've previously written. This is the code from my jumping tutorial. I have not done anything to it, and I'm just gonna show you how to set up debugging as part of this tutorial. If you've been following along, hopefully you've seen this kind of uh, squiggly lines before and you've seen how I fix it, but lots of people ask about it. So let me just show you it here, fixing it. If you just hover over the little light bulb and do edit include path settings, it will create this CPP properties. Uh, you can go into here and change it. We're just gonna actually edit it in this CPP file that's created. So if we go into here, you'll see it's got an include path. That's basically where it's going to look for the external libraries that it needs. And that's what it's complaining that it can't find. So we're just gonna put a new one in, comma, et cetera. Uh, it's in this include file path, but you'll notice it needs its backslashes escaping. So putting them in twice. Uh, and it will need that star star that this has got on the end, just saying all files, all directories to be included. So if we go back to main, you'll see it's all now gone away. So you can compile beforehand. It's just a warning that's in there. But what this does do is in Visual Studio Code, it gives you what's called IntelliSense, where as you're typing, it will figure out um, some existing functions from the libraries and it will help you understand uh, what those functions do a bit. Or sometimes it will bring a little bit of help text in telling you what they do. Um, so it's just a helpful little thing. You don't actually need it. So uh, this is our code, as I said before, it's it's exactly the same as the previous tutorial. So then we have the make.bat file. This is from my previous project. And there's a few things in here that we're gonna change. So we're gonna change the path to make sure it's GBDK 2020, but we're actually gonna change some of these. Some of these, um, I can kind of explain what they are now. I understand a bit more. Some of them we just don't need anymore, we can take out. So if I just copy the new version in, I put some comments in here just to kind of help us understand what's going on. So you'll see these commands like WA, WL, WF. And so some of these are passing um, commands into bits of this LCC compiler. So the different tools that it uses. So you've got um, stuff that's passing into the linker has got an L, stuff that's passing into the front end has got WF. And you kind of see the different commands here. We had WAL and WAM. We're now going to pass in this debug, so WF hyphen hyphen debug. This is going to pass um, the kind of debug command line into one of the tools for LCC. And that will generate a file that we need. So we need this CDB file to get created, you'll see in a moment. And that's what's actually used for debugging. It's, it's called the debugging symbols. It has the information that's needed for our debugger to work. But we also need a few other things. So we've got this uh, passing in W and M that we had before, which produces something called wide maps. It just helps when we're debugging to be able to get out the names of uh, variables and things without them being truncated. Um, and at the moment I've taken out the WL hyphen J that we used to have. I've left a kind of comment here. Um, so it used to be used if you wanted to debug in BGB uh, using assembly, but we're not gonna kind of use that at the moment. So it looks pretty much the same as it did before. We've got, initially we're creating the O file from the main file, and then we're creating uh, the GB file from main.o, but we've just got some small tweaks to it. And you can kind of read the comments above if you want a little bit more detail about what some of them are doing. And again, highly encourage you if you're really getting into this to go and have a look what LCC is using. So all the different tools that it's using and, and what these are getting passed in. But this is what we need to create our debug. So if we just save that, and open up the terminal. We can actually try compiling like this. So we're just gonna run make.bat. You may notice it's a little bit slower at compiling than GBDK used to. 
it takes a little bit longer to do. Uh, I understand it's doing a lot more behind the scenes, a lot more optimizations, ending up with a lot better, faster code. But you can see on the left here, it's created quite a lot more files than perhaps it used to. So we used to get SIM files and O files, um, but we've got some new ones in here as well. The most important one though is we've got this main.cdb, and this is what we need for our debugging. So we've obviously also got our game still, our .gb file, but you'll see in a moment, this is how we're actually gonna attach the debugger to the emulator and be able to see what we're going on. So now we're actually gonna start debugging our code. And what that really means is we can put particular points within the code that the debugger will stop at. So if we want to test something, we can actually put a little point in and when that code runs in the emulator, it will stop at that point and we can choose to do different things. So I'm gonna put something inside main, which if you remember is the kind of the main uh, method that gets called again and again, the loop, the game loop, and I'm just going to put a breakpoint here. So if you've never heard of breakpoints, it basically is what it says. It's going to stop the debugger, going to break it at this point. And the way you do that in Visual Studio Code is just to hover over the line just to the left of the number and click it and you'll see it stays red. If I want to put another one in, I can put one down here. So you can turn on and off breakpoints and you'll, you'll see how that works when we get into debugging. So there are a few ways to launch the debugger. Remember, we've turned on remote debugging in the emulator here. So that's already on. So the easiest way I found of doing it is to open up in Visual Studio Code by clicking on it main.gb and then to hit up here the debug file or go to run start debugging. It will ask you to select the environment. It should already have emulicious debugger because you've got the plugin installed. So if you select that and it seems to do nothing at the moment. So the next step you do is to go to here where it says run and you'll see there is an option to create and customize a launch.json file. So if you click on that and choose Emulicious Debugger, it will create this file here. And you don't really need to worry about it, it's all kind of uh, set up already for you. But what you probably want to do, instead of being asked every time which Game Boy file you want to run, here you can put the name of your .gb file. So ours is called main.gb. Don't forget in Visual Studio Code, you actually have to save every file. So do file, save. And now if we go back and we have main open, we should just be able to go run, start debugging. And you will see the emulator over here is actually started up with our um, code in. And by default, the emulator opens up this little debug window and it pauses right at the beginning of the code. So we can actually make it continue just by hitting this continue button that's come at the top. These here are your kind of debugging toolbar that comes up. So we're gonna hit play. Right, so you will see, if we go back to the emulator, there's nothing here yet, it hasn't managed to get through. But you can see that our code has kind of stopped here. It's highlighted this line. It's highlighted our breakpoint. That means the code has paused at this position. So I can actually hover over different items in here, like looking at what's in bloke. So I can see bloke uh, that is defined right at the top here, it's my sprite map. I can see all the values in it. I can then actually get the code to continue with one line. So you could, there are some keys for this on a keyboard or you can use the buttons at the top here. So step over is F10 on your keyboard. So it's gonna step over this line. It's gonna go to the next um, line that we've got in here. And this is player location, and you can see what's going on there. I can press F10 again, it will jump down a line, it will jump down a line, it will jump down a line. And all the way through this, if I want to find out what the value of a variable is, I can just hover over it. So jumping is currently zero. There are a few other ones as here that you'll see later on that you can step into a method. So if I wanted to step into move sprite, I could do that. Um, it's more for stepping into your own code, so you'll see later if we call some of our own methods like jump down here, we can step into it. Let's try that. So I'm pressing F10 again, which is the same as this up here, just to go line by line. And it helps you understand how your code is actually getting executed. So you can see here it's doing all these ifs, but it's not coming through, and it's going to come and do a performant delay. So performant delay, if you've been following mine, is a, a function I have here. If I just pressed F10 here, I did the continue, it would go over this line, but I actually want to go into the line and go and look at what performance delay does. So you've got this step into F11. So you'll see here, it actually comes up into performance delay. I can see the value of num loops. I've passed in five loops that I want. I can see the value of I, it's currently zero. 
we're going to run a few more and it helps you step through the entire code to kind of understand what it's doing all the way through. So you can see here i is now 1 because it's gone through the second loop. i is now 2 and you can see how it's going to let you understand the code there. There are a few other things you can do. So if you go down to the, the debugger where we started it here, you'll see there's actually a little kind of panel of information about where we are in the code. So we have this thing called locals. These are local variables, so variables that are inside the method that I'm currently looking at. So you can see num loops because that's getting passed in is five. We can see what the count of i is. If I step through, you'll see that change here. It's gone to three. So it helps you kind of, without having to go to each line, it helps you understand what's going on. If you wanted to keep an eye on a particular variable yourself, if you highlight it in the editor and do right click and do add to watch, you'll see it'll appear over here. So if it wasn't getting picked up in locals or if you wanted to see it during the rest of the code executing, you can put your own watches in. This is a thing that's common to all debuggers. So those of you who've already done programming and have used a debugger elsewhere, this will be really common sense to you. You'll understand how to do this now. But if, if you've never seen it before, it's a really, really powerful way of understanding your code. So I, I've had enough here. I don't want to see any more performance delay. I could either keep following it through till it exits out of it, or I can actually use the step out. And that will just continue the code automatically for me and come back to where it would be next. So it's gone back to our while loop because our loop is just going to loop again and again and again. If I just want to see how the game's going and I don't want to pause, if I just press play here, it will continue on through the code. And if we go back to our emulator, here is our man in our emulator. And my man jumps. I can move left and right. So if we wanted a breakpoint in to see what happens uh, when I move left, we'd go into the if statement, we would put a breakpoint here, go back to our game, and move left. And you see the moment I move left, it hit the breakpoint, uh, and I can now understand what's going on, so I can look at the player position. So if I want to look at that, if I add it to a watch, so the player is currently at an X position of 70, and now it's going to move it. If we go back again, we move him left again, it hits it again, and you can see player position is 70 still, but now it's taken one off, so it's now 68, and each time I move it, it takes it off. So you can see how powerful this is, it helps you really understand your code, rather than having to try and write things out to the screen which didn't always work well, you can stop your code wherever you want, you can move line by line, you can see what all the variables are doing, what they're currently set to, and really understand. So either because you've got some logic wrong, or quite often what I've found in some of my older code is that I've got um, variables set up incorrectly. So I've used the wrong type of variable. So I've used like an int eight, and then I've tried to store a number that's too big to fit in an int eight, and I, I, all of a sudden my code behaves differently than I expected. And so it's a really good way of understanding, oh, that's what I've done wrong. You can hover over something and see what's going on. So hopefully you can see how powerful that is. Go and have a play with it. See if you can kind of get the understanding of how to set breakpoints, how to turn them off if you don't need them. You can see I'm turning those on and off. How to look at your own variables, how to look at watches. It will really help you iron those bugs out of your code and help you even understand code that other people have written when you can kind of step through line by line and understand how it's working. Go and have a play, but I think this is a big game changer for all of us developers to be able to write our code much better and get it right and get those bugs ironed out and hopefully deliver Game Boy games that are much better, much faster than we're able to at the moment. So that's all for now. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'd love to hear any comments or questions you've got, but until next time, that's it.